I wanted to talk to you guys about quick mixing because I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there about it. And I gave it a lot of thought, right? It took a lot of long showers, a lot of long shits, and I gave it a lot of thought. Like, why doesn't every DJ quick mix? Why do DJs try quick mixing, they get yelled at, and then they get mad at me for telling them the quick mix. Why do DJs, they're not, not only, they're, they're, they're like, most DJs aren't just like, oh, you, you, you quick mix, I don't, and we keep it pushing. A lot of DJs are like, no, quick mixing sucks, you can't do that, it's terrible, I don't know why you guys are doing it, all these new kids, blah, blah, blah. People are adamantly against quick mixing. So I took a lot of long shits, I took a lot of long showers, and I thought about it, and thought about it, and thought about it, and I realized why that is, okay? And I'm gonna try and explain why this is to try and put it in perspective for you and then I'm gonna give you five or six, I think, five or six common quick mixing mistakes that DJs do that can really help you if you wanna learn how to quick mix or if you wanna get better at quick mixing or whatever, okay? We're gonna dive into this. Now, this is, this is how it works, I think. A DJ tries to quick mix, okay, makes a common mistake, all right, for whatever reason, they try and quick mix, and then they get an angry crowd. They get a crowd that's just pissed, okay, just pissed right now. And if, if you're DJing and you look out and people are like, yo, why'd you cut the song off? Yo, what are you doing? Da, 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 right? And you're getting that type of reaction. That's the worst possible reaction you can get. So obviously you're going to abandon quick mixing and never do that shit again, right? You're just going to, I'm out of here. Why would, Nick is dumb. I don't know what, like, why would he tell me to do that? Why would any DJ tell me to do that? You're going to abandon it, right? And it makes sense. Like when I really put that into perspective, right? Because like, think about it. If you quick mix wrong, people get mad, but if you long mix, people just get bored. And I think like a mad crowd is way scarier than a bored crowd because bored crowds, you can kind of write them off as just bad crowds. And I think that's what happens. I think a lot of people, you know, um, like if you don't quick mix, right? If, we're, if a DJ doesn't quick mix, they play whole songs and stuff and like they might get a crowd that's just like, eh, you know, kind of blah, 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 but they can write it off as, you know, they're just not a good crowd. They're just, they, they don't party, you know, whatever. This is one of those dud crowds because of something, a phenomena that we all run into from time to time, hopefully more often than not, but from time to time, we all run into this phenomena and that is a great crowd. See, great crowds are amazing. Great crowds are the craziest thing ever. Have you ever DJed an event or been to an event where like it didn't matter what the DJ played? It didn't matter what you did. They raged. They just, they were ready to go. They packed dance floor all night. It was just amazing, right? A great crowd. We all run into it. We all run into it. You look up, you're like, wow, I could do no wrong with these people. And for me, I'm just like, all right, well, what can I get away with here? I'm gonna just try this. Let me try this. You know, I'm just fucking right. It's a great time, right? We all love a great crowd. And I think that because as DJs, you can run into a great crowd and then long mix, fade into the next song, right? Don't worry about quick mixing or even beat mixing or anything like that, right? And that crowd still dance. That crowd still had, you have a pack dance for all night still. Then it's easier for you to write off like a crowd that's bored because you're long mixing as a bad crowd because you worked, you did it to the great crowd and it worked great. So like, it must be the crowd, not me. And I understand that, Okay but you're 100,000 million fucking percent wrong. And, and I just want to give you guys some really, 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 really good, like solid, like kind of tips in the form of mistakes that I think a lot of DJs do that could help you to be more successful at quick mixing because in the future, quick mixing, it already is here, but like more and more as the time goes on, you have to quick mix. Like that is the only key. Like it, 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 that is you. It is so, so important. You get to play more songs, okay? So it's a better bang for the couple's buck or anywhere you're at, right? You're playing more songs. You're getting more reactions. You're keeping the engagement longer. You know, you, you're you're not giving people time to just sit there and think if they left their garage door open or let's go to the bathroom or whatever. It gets boring if you play whole songs. And there's exceptions, of course, right? I think Shout, that my couple said, like, you know, no whole song except for Shout, I think Shout is a, a great exception, right? Shout, you want to play all the way through. Uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Light, you want to play all the way through, right? Because they do all the, you know, the back and forth and all that stuff, right? There's exceptions, but very few. Very, very, very few. So here is some quick mixing mistakes that I want to talk about, okay? We're going to start with number one. <laughs> 
Number one is, I think a big mistake a lot of people make is you mix out of your first song too fast. Picture it. You just started your dance set, okay? We're talking your first song, your anchor song. So, you know, if you started with a slow song, okay, you start with a slow song, but then like the first song you hit after that, your first fast song. A lot of people, I think, make the mistake is like when, you know, people are, it takes people time to get to the dance floor. So if you hit the first song and you quick mix out the first chorus, sometimes people were coming out to dance for that song, you quick mixed out and then they're like, oh, well, I don't want to dance now. You know what I mean? And I've made this mistake. I've watched it happen. I've literally have mixed out too fast. And I like from that first song, I've watched people literally just do a 180 and then go back the other way. I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa. The only time you want to mix out quick is if that song did not hit at all. Like if, if you hit that song and everyone just leaves the dance floor or no one comes out or whatever, then obviously like, you know, call an audible. But if you have a packed dance floor for that first song, let it go for a little longer. Actually let it do, do a second course. Okay. Let people, you know, let the dance floor build, let the people breathe, let them, you know, get stretched and warmed up. Okay. Don't mix out too fast right up front. Get them first then go do your thing, okay? Second big mistake I see, bad phrasing. This is probably one of the most, this is probably one of the biggest mistakes where DJs get yelled at, okay? You try and quick mix, you quick mix out of a song and they're like, yo, why did you cut that off? Chances are you might've cut, cut that off in the middle of a verse, in the middle of the chorus, you know? Or done words over words where like maybe your phrasing technically was, by the way, phrasing, you never want to cut it off in the middle of something while people are singing everything. You kind of want to like wait till a section of the song is complete and then mix out. There's exceptions if you're doing, if you have a cool idea, wordplay, that sort of thing, obviously, but that's a whole nother road that I'm not going to get that. That's a whole nother, whole nother seminar. Okay. But generally speaking, you want that section of song to be completed, right? Usually after a chorus. You finish the course and then bam, the next song comes in. Now, if you cut it off in the middle, people are going to get pissed because they're in the middle of singing it. So like, whoa, what are you doing? All right. Even if you had a, like the best song in the world coming up next, it doesn't matter. They were singing. You cut it off. You messed them up. If you have it timed out right where like the next song comes in right after the chorus, but like your, your words over words or it just doesn't like sound right. You know what I mean? Where it's kind of like, like the song you're mixing in is stepping on the first song. Then people can also get mad. Like, well, what are you doing? Like it just sounds, it sounds dissonant. It doesn't sound good to my ears. Right. The phrasing has to be on point. 1000%. Okay. For this to work. The third biggest mistake is using short edits and then mixing intro over outros. So I'm not against short edits. I think short edits are cool, but generally even the short edits are too long for me. You know, I mean, there's super, I like the super short edit. It depends on the song too. You know, some short edits are just basically two verses, two choruses, and that's it. And then what people do is they use the short edits and then you basically mix intro over outro. I highly, I think it's a very bad idea. I don't, can't even think of a good situation where you should be mixing intro over outro because you have four, eight, 16 bars of time where it's just an instrumental and people are just two-stepping. It's just like, what's happening? Even if your mix is on point, right? Even if it's a perfectly beat match mix, it doesn't matter. You have eight bars, 16 bars of boring, just instrumental until the nuts and bolts of the next song comes in. And then it's like, oh, okay, now I know this song, right? So you're giving people a huge gap of time to think about something else, like going to the bathroom, like getting a drink, like going home, like calling their mom. I don't know anything. You know what I mean? You don't want to give people a gap. You want to get one song done and hit them with the next song. So they don't have time to think they're lost in it, right? Like, you know, you're just lost in the music, having a great time. You know, those gaps can snap people out of the ether as they say. So don't mix intros over outros, mix your intro underneath the chorus and then when the chorus is done then you bring in the next song you know what i mean like like that way like there's no like just instrumental gaps i just i i i don't believe in them I, they never work and i just think it's a boring way to mix you know and and if you could beat mix the outro you could beat mix over chorus just as well the other thing is staying in a bpm range for too long Again, there's a million ways to do this. In my opinion, okay, these are all my opinions, by the way. If you are, if you disagree, tell me in the comments, all right? Please, please fight me, all right? I think generally you don't want to stay into a BPM too long because it can get boring as well, right? I ride BPMs. So when I DJ, 
I'll stay it, like I'll be in like the hundred BPM range, and then all of a sudden I'll jump and I'll play like you know uh, one ten, one fifteen, like two or three in there in like the no man's land because not like a ton of songs in there, and then I do another jump and go to the one twenties. Right now I'm in the one twenties, one twenty fives, one twenty eights. I chill there for a little bit, then I'll do a jump and go into the sixty five seventies. Right, uh, you know, uh, and and, and then going through the seventies and then the eighties, and then I do another jump and I'll go to the nineties, the hundreds. Now I'm back at the hundreds. And I keep doing that loop, right? I generally, sometimes I do, but generally I don't go the opposite direction because I think if you're going up in BPM and doing that loop all the way around, you're building energy the whole time. When you go down, you could be losing energy unless you have a good idea, unless like it's all situational. There are the things I do that go down, but like, but it works because of the idea or what I'm doing. Generally speaking, I do a, uh, what would that be? A clockwise loop around the BPM circle, if uh, you want to call it that. And I think if you stay in one BPM too long, it can get boring. You know, even if your mixing's perfect, everything else, it's just the same beat over and over again. It could just kind of just get, eventually it turns into background noise. You know what I mean? Eventually it's just like, womp, 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 womp. You know, you want to just kind of switch it up. And that's a great tip too. Like if you're, if you're DJing and you're playing bangers, but it feels like you don't have them, you're kind of losing them a little bit, then make a hard left turn to another BPM somehow. I do that all the time. And it kind of resets the dance floor. It gets everybody's attention again. They perk back up if it's a good song, whatever. And, oh, and then you get them back. And then now you go from there. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just, I, I think in general, you know, always think about that. You know, don't stay anywhere too long because it can get bored. Another thing too, so not utilizing recognizable parts of the song. And this can confuse people. There's a lot of examples I can give of this. Like, when you hear a song, listen for the parts that people recognize the most and then use those parts to mix, if that makes sense. Because you want your mixes to be very, very, you want the average person to be able to consume your mix and instantly know what you're doing so they can get excited. So they can, oh, I love this song. Oh, it's coming on. Oh, or start singing, right? So you do that by utilizing the best parts of the song, the most recognizable parts of the song. Um, an example, okay? Let's take two songs that I mix together all the time. This is how we do it. And uh, yeah, by Usher. Okay, right? Not even mixed together, but you know what I mean. They're the same BPM range, kind of similar, whatever, right? Yeah, by Usher. If I mix Yeah, by Usher, most of the time I'm utilizing the beat by Yeah, by Usher instead of the words because that's a super recognizable beat. So I'll take the instrumental out of the song I'm playing and then bring in the Yeah beat because da 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 da. People hear that, oh, da, 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 da. they know that, right? Because it's like a recognizable beat. On the flip side, this is how we do it, doesn't really have a recognizable beat. Unless you like, you know, you're a DJ and you've played it 300 times and maybe you can kind of pick it out, but it's still hard. It's just like, doom, 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 doom. Like it's kind of like just a, it's not a super recognizable beat. So when I play this is how we do it, typically I just bring it in from the one. This is how we do it. Because the second everyone hears this, they know what's coming. So I get the reaction. That song, I get the reaction from the vocals, not the beat. Opposite from yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And then also like playing songs, like not using intro edits, uh, songs that don't need intro edits, that have amazing intros. Like Hot in Here by Nelly. Boom, ba, da, da, so hot. And right? That, when you drop that out of nowhere, everyone's going to be like, oh, hot in here, right? Uh, Lean Back by Fat Joe. Da, 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 right? Everyone will recognize that the second you drop that. So you get a reaction. You're utilizing the best parts, the most recognizable parts of the song rather than beat mixing those in with an intro. And then it's just like, uh-huh. And then it just comes in and then they're like, oh, that's cool. And like it works, but like you're not, you're not going to get the same reaction or the same energy from the crowd. So if you really think of mixing that way and think when you're quick mixing, not only just like quick mixing and playing the best parts, knowing which parts to play and everything and having your phrasing correct and like, you know, but also getting creative with how you mix it, you know, mix it different ways based on the song and utilize those most recognizable parts to get the best reactions from the crowd. So sometimes you might want to beat mix. Sometimes you might want to just drop it on the one out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Echo something out, reverb it out, drop something on the one, you know, sometimes come like there's a lot of different ways to do it and i just definitely if you don't already think about that think about like what how can i mix this like what's the most recognizable part of this song and then how can i mix it to showcase that and bring that in first 
And I think if you really start doing that, you'll it'll pay dividends big time on the dance floor. And then and then the last one is just knowing the best parts of every song. And that's something that constantly evolves. You know, you're constantly learning. I'm constantly learning. And, and you know, it's, so you're never going to be perfect at this. I, I every all the time I oh. I cut that off too early. I didn't realize everyone knew that last part out of nowhere. I didn't know that was a TikTok. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so you kind of get to know um, as you go along. And I'm constantly learning. You're constantly going to be learning. But like, pay attention to this stuff. Figure out which parts to play and then go with it. You know what I mean? And then sometimes there's songs that like I've, for example, Bottoms Up. I've been playing Bottoms Up forever at my weddings for a while now. Like, I probably brought Bottoms Up back like, I don't know, like maybe five years ago. I started playing it again, you know, Bottoms Up and like uh, Walk It Out and like that whole thing. Like, I started doing like a set in the 70s, 80s uh, BPMs there. And I completely forgot. uh, I listened to it, I think, on Apple Music or something. I completely forgot about the Nicki verse on Bottoms Up. Let me get that Coke. Let me get that Henny. Let me get that dum 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 rim 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 tray, right? I completely forgot. That was a legendary verse. Like that we all knew, like when I was like, when that song came out, like we would all bop that. Right. I completely forgot about it. I played it for years without doing that. verse. Now I always skip to the Nikki verse and everyone sings it. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, you still figure out things as you go along too. It's constantly evolving, but like definitely pay attention and get to know the best parts of the songs. And if you know that very well and you know which songs that you can cut off and what songs you can or where to cut them off and everything, that's literally the major key. And you never, if you're a good mixer, you'll never have a problem. Quick mixing will literally pack your dance floor every single time. It'll take a boring crowd and make them rage. Trust me. Just trust me. 